Hello, my name is Vicente Nemeimana and this is Mika Life, your life in fullness. In today's second part, we are still continuing to examine uh, General Mugishamuntu's past to see traces, to examine traces of his trustworthiness. Now, in the first part, we explored his early life, growth and education. And in that part, we discovered that he indeed is a guy whose change you can trust. And now in this second part, we are going to examine his life when he had just joined NRA and then his life in NRA in the bush. And then shortly 1986 after they had taken over Uganda up to 1998 when he left NRA or when he left in seven and joined the politics on the opposition side in the two southerns. So stay with me and let's look at it. Let's see if we can find traces of his trustworthiness. Is he the real change you can trust? I want to remind you that if you have not subscribed yet, please, watching alone is not enough. Help us grow this channel, support it by just becoming a subscriber and it is completely free. So click on that subscribe button down there and click on the bell icon that shows there after as well so that you never miss notifications that are reminding you of newest videos that I have posted on this YouTube channel. So in 1981, when Muntu just finished his political science a graduate bachelor at the University of Makerere, the guy, instead of going home and securing his best job uh, of becoming a, a, a presidential aide for Milton Obote, the job that his father had already secured for him, the guy went straight to the bush. That first March 1981, General Grigori Mugishamut joined the NRA and General William Seveni in the bush to fight and bring the change that you can trust. Now, a few days into this bush war, General Mut was shot in the chest and he was sneaked in Kampara Kisekai Center. He was helped and the guy got better. He had been shot in the chest during one of the confrontations with the Milton Obote uh, guys or soldiers. Now, instead of taking this chance of being in the hospital and then escape and never go back to the bush, the guy, after getting a little better, sneaked back and went back to the bush. Actually, even Moon had confessed himself that because he was coming from a family of UPC guys, he was never trusted fully by his fellow guys in the NRA uh, regime in the bush. But because of his actions, because of his discipline, because of his loyalty, day after day, he was trusted later through experience. The trust in Moon to wasn't just a belief, he had to work it out. Uh, when he survived the bread, the guy went back to the bush and then got more trust from the regime or the bush war a leader who was general um, seven at that time. And then he was given more duties in the NRA uh, guerrilla war. He was a political commissar in the rebel Mondrian unit and was later made its intelligence officer. He later became the Kawalega unit intelligence officer for Mokoya. He was made the director of civil intelligence while General Jim Wes was director of military intelligence. That is 1983 when they were still in the bush. Because of his actions, his discipline, delivering on what he has promised, he built that trust and they started giving him more uh, duties, more positions that uh, required more of his responsibility. In 1986, of course, NRA took power in the famous Kampara War and later Moon was made the head of military intelligence. In the Wikipedia's account, it is said that he had guys like Paul Kagame under his management of intelligence and in one account, by the way, he also had Colonel Fred Bogere. After 1986, when Mutu was director of military intelligence, Bogere was one of his deputies, together with Major Biema Ramijumbi and Major Paul Kagame, who is currently the president of Rwanda and is now at the rank of general. Is that principle the person who does not have these issues of ours? This is ours our own this you know those those type of tendencies which we see in many many individuals in other words you can't say you cannot go with him and connive to do something uh 
against people. All those guys were under Muntu's leadership in the military intelligence and the Poro Kagame, you already know that he's currently the president of Rwanda. In the following year of 1987, General Muntu was sent for further trainings in Russia and when he came back, he was made the chief political commissar taking over from Amanya Mushega. From then, the younger soldier never looked back. In one account, his success is attributed to his loyalty and incorruptible service. From being army commander, the guy was later promoted to the rank of major general and appointed the army commander in 1989 to 1998. Now, when the army was later named the UPDF after the 1995 constitution, the Muntu's position, of course, became the chief commander of the UPDF, the biggest rank by then, and he is believed to be the second person to have run that position longest, of course, after General uh, Yoel Museveni. So we are saying between 1989 to 1998, General Munt was the chief, was the army commander of UPDF, and under his leadership, so many things happened in the army. According to so many testimonies, Munt built an army and disciplined it, made it principal and professional. He fought against corruption and the embezzlement of funds within the army by bringing everyone to boom. Munt is said to have taken back 50,000 soldiers from the army back into their normal lives. Surprisingly, some sections of the army, especially headed by General James Kazin, accused the Munt of sidelining people who were less educated. However, a deep examination of these accusations found really nothing tangible that Timur did this. The major point must have been because of his discipline, because of him bringing in the idea of professionalism, those who were crude in their workings must have sensed the kind of alienation. Because he said that uh, he was even supported and uh, given more power by Museveni in his actions. And Museveni, who was also actually a, a good guy when it comes to James Kazin, because uh, some reports say that despite complaints from people that James Kazin wasn't learned or educated, Museveni kept promoting Kazin and making him the person he died when he was. Additionally, more on the life of James Kazin, reveals he was a man who was very corrupt and unfaithful, though he was most commended for being fearless when in battle. Uh, in 2003, James Kazin was actually uh, court-martialed on charges of embezzlement of government funds through creation of ghost workers in the army thousands of ghost workers and that money he would channel it sideways maybe it could be because of these different cold dealings that made him co ride a lot with general moon who was so much disciplined and straight to the book in general all the comments show that he was a great leader in the army who was principled who was loyal and never took in any bribe straight to the point and very loyal to the mission Okay, so besides his army position, Mood was also a member of NRC. Now, NRC was National Resistance Council. This was an interim group of trusted friends from NRA uh, labels or from those who had fought in the bush who first took over the governing of our country when Museveni took over in 1986. Of course, there was no big parliament, there was no nothing. So NRC was like a governing body, the interim governing body of the nation as the country prepared itself to have formal elections and everything there is. So um, Mugisha Mund was part of that any. RRC, National Resistance Council, the group of 38 soldiers, including some few guys who were allowed to join from UPC and DP to form one body that would govern the country. Now, in 1993, there was a commission called the Odok Commission that was commissioned to start on the idea of developing the 1995 constitution. The Odok Commission did the consultations that brought in the ideas that would inform or guide the Constituent Assembly of 1994 to 1995, of course, that was forming the 1995 Constitution on what to put in the Constitution. Now, 
General Moon, who was part of these meetings or who was part of the assembly of the 1994 to 1995, forming the constitution, did something. Before I can dig into this thing, I would like to remind you that when Museven took over power in 1986, they banned or they stopped the multi party system. The idea was there was no need of having different sections of opposition, of ruling, yet the country just needed to be rebuilt. So Museveni convinced these guys that under any NRC, they should first rebuild the nation and then they could think about the multi system thing later, maybe after four years. However, after four years, the guy said he needed more time to stabilize the nation which led to so many other times, so many other times, until the 1995 constitution, which constitution also consolidated more power and gave it to the president. And now it is said that during the making of this constitution, Moon raised the voice and opposed what M7 was doing and where he was taking the nation and demanded that the people be given more power and the restriction is on humanity system be relieved or be reduced. In the words of one of the political authors in Uganda, James Katorobo, Mugisha Mutu is the only NRC guy who opposed what the Odok Commission had recommended or had presented for the constitution of the 1995. These words are from that document exactly. However, in what has been described as a rare democratic sentiment from a military source in Africa, the commander of the National Resistance Army, Major General Mugisha Mundu, chastised the members of the NRIC for fearing to face the electorate and called for a renewed mandate from the people prior to the adoption of the 1995 constitution. Are you seeing? So Mundu's stand in 1994 was even or is described as a rare democratic sentiment from a military source in Africa. In 1995, he's the only guy from NRC who stood up and said, guys, 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 we need the mandate, we need the approval from people on these things, we need them to have power, not our selves. So you can see him. And uh, in my writings, actually, I say, in light of how Mugishamun presented himself during the Constitution Assembly, should we take this as his first official and public expression of his indignance to Museveni's policies and where he was taking the country? Indeed, in Daily Monitor, it is recognized that his fallout with Museveni started out in uh, around 1995, after his a stint as a member of the Constituent Assembly, which enacted the 1995 Constitution. They disagreed on the military and political approach that saw his removal from a military command and appointment as a minister, which the position which he politely turned down. Yes, so uh, in Mugisha's life, you can see that from 1995, when he made those remarks during the formulation of 1995 Constitution, Three years after that, Mugisha Mundu was removed from his power of the army chief and given a ministerial position as the minister of defense, the position he turned it down. The guy turned down the position of becoming the minister of defense simply because he had values, he had principles that he stood for and the people were not accepting to obey their principles. The change you can trust said no i would rather go and see it luckily enough he was later selected by the members of parliament to go and stand for us in the east african legislative assembly in that is between 2002 to 2012 or 2001 to 2012 later to pronounce himself very clearly the guy joined opposition we are going to cover this in the part three Mugisha Mundu leaves any other A and joins opposition. So if you were to ask me, is he the guy whose change you can trust? My answer is a very big yes from this uh, examination. Number one, he joined NRA not because of any other thing, but because of the values and truth he stood for. Number two, when he reached there, while many were suspicious of his 
uh, trustworthy. The guy worked out for his trust, but including going back even after he was shot in the chest. Number three, when they took over power in 1986, he was an exceptional army leader. During his reign as the army chief, he, he stabilized the army, uh, disciplined it, and institutionalized it. Another point and the, a big one is that in 1995, during the uh, Constituent Assembly and the making of the 1995 Constitution, General Mugisha Mundo stood on the, size, on the side of people and wanted the Constitution to give much power to people and you know, to the president, something that costed him his position as the army chief. Lastly, when the position of army chief was taken out from him and given a position of becoming a minister for defense, General Mugisha Mundo rejected and sacrificed those pressures for the values he stood for. This is very important that he had to forego all of those pressures, all of those opportunities just to defend the trust, to defend the, the principles he stood for. So if you were to ask me, is he the guy whose change you can trust? My answer is a very big yes. In the next part, in the third part, we shall examine his life after leaving NLA in 1998 and joining the opposition in the 2000s, specifically joining FDC, and we see his life there. Can he be trusted based on the decisions, actions, and things he did while in the opposition? For now, ciao, ciao. I want to remind you that every video I post here, there is an article and a PDF version of it at www.namevix.com. So please go there and read this account. Find there the links I have put there for you to re-examine for yourself. If you have not subscribed yet, please, watching alone is not enough. Help us grow this channel, support it by just becoming a subscriber and it is completely free. So click on that subscribe button down there and click on the bell icon that shows there after as well so that you never miss notifications that are reminding you of newest videos that I have posted on this YouTube channel. For now, ciao, ciao.